You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. I'm a fan of his uh, sneakers and his book bags that are amazing. I can't pronounce his last name, so that means that his stuff must be easy. very pricey. <laughs> it's a lot of anything I can't pronounce, Wait, I can't pronounce afford. Try it. Busemi. <laughs> <laughs> so close. <laughs> try again. That's all I got. <laughs> John, is it Buccini? No. Yeah, how you gonna tell me to try That's... again and you don't even know? Is it Buccini? You don't even know. How do you pronounce it, Yee? Buscemi. Oh, perfect. Buscemi, I've been calling Buccini for a long time. Buscemi. Now, let me say something. So, I hit the guys up in a chat, because I'm not sure, like, you know, we all know fashion, but I was like, let me hit them up and let them know I want John Buscemi to come up. We got Fashion Week coming up in New York. You have the flagship store that's about to open nice. in New York. Mm. Actually, we'll be there for that. But I hit the guys in a group chat, like, hey, I want to have this guest on the show. Immediately, Envy calls me. Like, he don't never call. He don't even text back when we ask about guests. Uh, yeah, so I saw this book bag that I wanted. And so I was going to buy it yesterday. So that's odd that you would have him. So I was like, oh, my God. All right, let's calm down. <laughs> let's get uh, let's get John Buscemi up here. Well, let's talk about how you got into the, the sneaker business. I first. love this story, the, the, by the, the way. How did you get into the business? Well, you know, growing up in New York and, you know, the m- mid-'80s, you know, early-'80s, mid-'80s, what part of New York? Uh, I grew up in Uniondale, Long Island. Long Island, okay. Uh, the home of the leaders of the new school. Absolutely. <laughs> L-O-N-S. L-O-N-S. You know, I went to school with uh, Mr. Smith and his brother Paul, you know, Buster Rhymes. Okay. Um, and that whole kind of click out Wait, there. Wait, this is not the same Buccini that Buster used to do back in the day, is it? That wasn't Buccini. Was you guys, can you say the name that right? That was Bushi. Yeah. Oh, Bushi, okay. I said no. <laughs> it's, no first of all, no. it's not, can you it's say Buscemi. it right, guys? Buscemi. 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 It's not that hard. Like the actor. Steve okay, Buscemi. Buscemi. That's right. That's right. So, um, in my neighborhood, I was part of the crew that was, like, customizing everything. I don't know if you remember, like, in the early 80s, it was like we were taking... New era hats and putting uh, uh, sequins on the on the on the and the N and the Y and we were doing you know you see uh, all the merch happening in the world right now with like the T-shirts we were making those T-shirts with those flocked letters back in the eighties because we were all bit by the you know we were bit by the hip hop bug early back in Long Island mm-hmm. on some sub- suburban type you right. know like. We had the linoleum floor in the cul-de-sac, but not on the street. Like we were trying, <laughs> we were just seeing everything. Right. And being in Long Island, like affluent, like black and Latina Latinos were moving to Long Island. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like people with you know that were co- you know leaving the boroughs and like I Let can me buy leave a house Queens now. and go to Long yeah. Island. That was like yo, that was that, that was, was a thing. Move. It was if you a huge to Long Island. Yeah. You made it. Yeah, like you had an uncle that lived in Long Island, right? <laughs> yeah, so that had a pool. You went. What? So I was the poor white person living on a block where rich black people were moving to (laughs) right so when you have people from brooklyn and queens black people with this all new hip-hop with style no i'm saying no i'm saying like the bank manager the the superintendent of the Mm -hmm. school like living on my block the kids were moving from brooklyn brooklyn like the kid like we were like i'm getting goosebumps like hit by a lightning bolt with fashion Mm. like that brooklyn swag in long island and like like B boys in in like the cul de sac with like the lawn and right, you know right. so we were like sitting on my dad's uh, you know uh, Chevy listening to Red Alert and break dancing in the street and customizing clothes like in third grade so wow. whatever so that's where it started right and then the Air Revolution came out and then it was just like you were a sneaker collector like like your head exploded you know and then. We were hustling. No, I mean, no lie. I had like a full blown business in fifth grade selling customized hats and t shirts. I was going to wow. Shoppers Village in West Hempstead and buying, yeah, you know, I was buying like two pairs of Air Revolutions and I wasn't even 10 years old yet. That's crazy. Mm. And I had one to wear and had one to, the now, now they say one to rock and one to stock. Right. That's a stupid. <laughs> I don't like the, that's funny, but that's, that's what <laughs> I, we sense. were doing. But yeah. I hate that it's like a term now, right. like when I was actually doing that. Absolutely. It was no anyway, term for it. What the hell is Air Revolutions? Wow. How old are you? Break, break it down for me. What's yeah. Air Revolution? Okay. That's what I'm asking the question. What's the Air Revolution? Air Revolution was probably the, I think, the mo- not probably, it's the most groundbreaking sneaker of all time, in my opinion. It's the first It's the first basketball sneaker with a visible airbag mm. and the Velcro strap on top and actually had the commercial 
I don't know if you remember that commercial that Wyden and Kennedy did. It was like one of the biggest commercials ever. It was like kind of like an Apple commercial back then. You know? Wyden and Kennedy? Yeah, that's like the advertising agency that did it. Oh, gotcha. Now, how many pairs of sneakers would you say you had back then? Oh, back then? I had more sneakers than anyone in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Put together. <laughs> for sure. But, you know, being you know, 10, 11 years old and you had like 12, 15 pairs of sneakers, you were like, what? Yeah, oh, what right. is happening? You know? Right. So that just no. kind of got parlayed into this love for fashion, this love for sneakers, and then you fast forward to me, you know, I'm in St. John's University now, and I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and I got a job on Wall Street, actually, and I started to make more money, and the collection started to grow, and we, at that time, we were like, we were hypnotized, we were like, uh, uh, we were driving to Philly, we were driving to like, the, like Boston, going to like, these like Korean, like warehouse, like these Koreans would own these big sneaker stores, and they mm-hmm. would go to their warehouse and like, oh, do you have, oh, oh, you have Jordan ones like stacked to the ceiling with dust on them. <clears throat> we'll take those. We were just like buying sneakers around mm-hmm. the tri-state area. It's interesting that you became a stockbroker because it seems like your true calling from a very early age was fashion. Yeah, but the funny thing is, when you're into fashion the way I was into it, it's very expensive. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was sitting in. I was sitting at a party in in Long Island like in 1992 and I hated college and a friend of mine pulled up to a party in a Ferrari and I'm like, (laughs) you were the dumbest person in my high school and you just pulled up to this this party in a Ferrari. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I I went on to Wall Street and just because of not just the sneaker and the fashion habit, I obviously, you know, wanted to make some money and I was young, Mm -hmm. but I parlayed it immediately. The market crashed and... uh, I kind of quote unquote hustled my way into a very junior design gig at DC Shoes, which is a big skateboard company right. back in the early 2000s. Now, now, when you was coming up in Long Island, why didn't you just boost, steal out of stores like a lot of people did? I guess because of the way I was raised, we, we, that's not what we did, you know. We, uh-huh. you know, I guess a, a here or there, you know, but not really the boosting mentality. You know what I'm saying? It was that, the hustle mentality. It was more the hustle mentality. You know, I was I was raised around. A, a, a family that worked really hard to get, and I, I, I think it was just the way I was raised. Now, how, how did it, it kick off so crazy? Because it seemed like the sneakers were very limited, but everybody wanted them. I mean, you, you couldn't find them. Very few stores sold them. And it, it's, did that happen fast? Because it, it took off really quick. It was one of, the, one of the most, I mean, even just taking myself out of the equation, just seeing and being around this industry, industry for so long to see what happened. It was actually my name on it. It was unbelievable. I think what happened was it was a perfect timing. When I was really motivated when Christian Louboutin and Giuseppe Zanotti was doing, were doing this like four or five years ago, they were sort of the, like, oh, you can make, you can, you can do this. It was like, oh, wow. Right. But then I was, I've been telling this story through my design career forever, but I just never had the opportunity. And they almost like just opened the lane, like, Mm-hmm. So you just the, told me how to pronounce Louboutin, by the way. Oh, I thought it was Louboutin. Yeah, Louboutin. <laughs> Louboutin. You say Louboutin too. It's a Louboutin. You do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's like a T and. You need to be saying Louboutin. Shut up. You still say Louis. Louis. Y'all, I know y'all be saying. Charlemagne says red bottoms. Period. Yeah, period. That's what everybody says. <laughs> I don't know it was Louboutin. <laughs> but, but, you know. but but okay, let's let's um, rewind a second. So Buscemi, you've been around for three years. The the sneaker collection, right. the footwear collection. Yeah, we right? launched exactly three years ago. Oh, this wow. month, yeah. That is not today, but this month. That yeah. is pretty quick, though. Very quick for you to have uh, gotten the popularity. Right. But I think it, I think it, you could see similarities in music, right? Where mm-hmm. you know I don't you know this trap thing or whatever. Like the lane was open, and you know I'm into music, and you see it fills up, and now it's saturated, right? But it's everything's very hyper. I think ten years ago, if I did this, it would have taken it would have taken it took a lot longer. Yeah, like now it's like instant. You know, I got it in Colette and Maxfields and Union and Barneys, but and you, then and then the right person wears it, and then. It's just like hyper accelerated because of the social but media. Who was the first too? big person that was wearing the um, the footwear that you were like, whoa? Well, you know, th- there's a few different people that we could say, but I think the first really massive person was uh, Puffy, who was wearing the shoes like every day, like mm-hmm. early on. Puffy, was Puffy was was a major one, but I think also what kicked the shoes off so so crazy was a lot of people thought Hermes made them. Mm. They thought Hermes made them because of the buckle and and the way that right. it, it's similar to it. 
And everybody was going to the Hermes stores looking for the sneakers, and they couldn't find it. And Hermes was like, no, uh, these, these sneakers, because I went to the Hermes store looking for them. I was like, where are these sneakers? I don't remember. I, don't remember. I think it was Puff. I said, I seen Puff wear them. Where are they? They was like, no, we're not. And then I had to go to Kith to actually find them, and they right. were so limited. And you couldn't, and the way that you released them was dope, because it's not like you could go there and buy every color. It was like a limited edition. Like you see, sometimes you could get the white, sometimes mm. you could get the black, sometimes you could get the orange, and it made it really, really dope. And I was just surprised. But how did you have the backing to make those shoes at that point? Because they weren't cheap shoes. It's not like the first shoe you come out first edition and they cheap leather. And that's right. the reason I think I like the company so much because everything is high quality. The book right. bags are expensive leather, high quality. The accessories, the everything is is nice. How did you get the back into make such a good quality sneaker? Well, well, being in being around this industry for so long, I've been kind of like, you know, for lack of a better term, I've been working for other people, but I've been working for myself, mm -hmm. right? So I've been through the journey of working for other companies and making them money and doing things great for them. I've been like pulling contacts into mm -hmm. my world, and and uh, when I met my Italian partners, I met them through a company I was working for at the same time. So that was Lotto. Yeah, well, not the, I worked for Lotto for a while, but it was more when it was, um, I have another partner, Ryan Babenzine. Mm -hmm. he, and he, he's, he's a partner of mine in another business, and his brother is a creative director for Supreme. The, oh, okay. And they were doing something in Italy, and I was in Italy at the same time, and it's like, it's just like having this network of people around the world, so and it's like, hey, I got this, because I could have made my shoe anywhere. I could have made it in China. I could have made it in the U.S. I could have made it anywhere. But the story lended itself to make it in Italy because of, I w like, you hit it on the head. I wanted to make the nicest sneaker that ever existed on the planet, or at least try to do it. Right. And that, and you know, now I make my sneakers where Chanel and Lan Vaughn and you know Christian right. Louboutin make their sneakers in the same on the same block. You didn't so, want to mass produce something that would be available for yeah. everybody. You wanted to be something that was special, limited, Absolutely. high quality. Absolutely. Did you ever get? Did you get ever get in a problem or any, um, I guess, lawsuits, anything from Hermes because they're similar with the lock and the yeah. key or, or not at all? No, no, we, we 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 haven't had any problems. Nothing, nothing. But the inspiration really wasn't so directly with them. It was more about, you know, that the idea of taking a handbag and making it into a sneaker. And actually, I had a dream. Um, did my, you do that? Because somebody said you did that. That you actually took a handbag and from that leather made a sneaker? Right. So it was a, well, the, the I guess it's the telephone game. The actual idea and the inspiration was from a dream. I split up with my wife for a couple of months and I was sleeping in a hotel room and I had a That's dream. That's story. You sticking to it? I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night and this is during the Blackberry days. Right. You never you wake up in the middle of the night and you were like, let me put this note in my Blackberry. Right. right. So I don't forget. So I woke up. The dream was, and actually I bought my wife a, a, a bag, a similar bag to the one you were saying. A Birkin and, or a Kelly. Right. Birkin. Kelly bag. And I and the dream was I woke up, we had a fight, and I cut her bag up and made a sneaker out of it. It was like a wild fantasy, crazy dream. Whoa. That's I, the people out there that don't know how much that cost. Yeah, that's about uh, an eight to twelve thousand dollar dream right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the crazy, you know, my crazy brain working. And four years later, that BlackBerry idea came, you wow. know, came to surface, you know, to surface. So it's crazy. No, it's interesting it's to me. Like, I just like the whole journey just because of how you first started. You kind of had a passion at a young age that you didn't know what was going to happen with it later on in life. Right. But you did take your skills from working for other people in order to develop into starting a brand for yourself. Because in a way, you could have never did and accomplished what you accomplished without having had those experiences. Absolutely. Sometimes people feel like, oh, just start your own business. Oh, just do this. But no. you really do need the experience and the groundwork to be able to do that and the connections. Absolutely. Uh, someone came up to me in the street just last week and, yo, I love your, I love your stuff. Yeah, can you give me any advice? I want to start, start exactly. And every time so, this happens to me, I say, go work for a big company. Mm -hmm. Go steal the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go just rape and pillage and work. Whoa. <laughs> and, and knowledge. <laughs> rape <laughs> the knowledge. <laughs> you know, get the knowledge, man. Because, you know, come on. You know, you can't just start, you know, you're 21 years old out of FIT. You can't start a brand of this. I mean, this is my life's. Like my whole third grade to forty years old is in in these shoes, you did, know. Did you sell part of the company or no? 
Um, we partnered with uh, we partnered with uh, a few people um, along the way. Um, we didn't, we, but we didn't sell the company. We just partnered with people to help us uh, grow and expand the, uh, the the line. The reason I ask is, is like I said, at one time it was so limited. Like you you had to really search to find them. But now I'm starting to see it everywhere. You right. know, whether it's Neiman Marcus, whether it's Barney's, mm-hmm. and does that hurt hurt or help the business? Well, basically, there there's always the you know the, there's the balance, right? So when you have a Neiman Marcus or a Bergdorf Goodman and a Barney's coming and asking you, hey, do you this again? This doesn't really happen in this business. Mm-hmm. It, you usually have to you know knock on the door. But when you have people coming to ask you, can you can can you sell us your line? You have to you know. Obviously, we want to partner with the best people in the world. So, believe it or not, it looks like it's everywhere, but there's like a whole laundry list of people we've said no to. So, it's it's kind of a balance, right? Because, you know, it, it bothers me, and this is just my, my, my sneakerhead syndrome. There's so much out there and so much garbage out there, and it seems like, you know, I, 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 don't, well, I, I mean, they, I don't know them anyway, but like if you look at Giuseppe Zanotti's, they are so, it's too much. It's overdone, right. you know? And then you, you look right next to it, it's, um, who else makes sneakers that are so done? Um, <laughs> all the sneakers, a lot of them are so done. And, they, yeah. and they're all in the same area, so it kind of puts all the highline sneakers together, you know right. what I mean? Where I figured y'all's w- w- was a little different, you know? Because, right. uh, like, I don't want to see the Giuseppe Zanotti's anymore. Right. I don't want to see the, uh, I don't even know the name of them because I don't wear them. Um, but I don't, don't want to see them. It, it seems like it, it oversaturates yeah. the market. I don't I mean, know the name of them because I can't pronounce them. <laughs> We were just talking about this outside, Joe and I. Um, the market is getting a bit saturated mm-hmm. because I think what happened was three years ago, everyone tried to race to this this elegant, you know, high end sneaker. The Balenciaga yeah. is one of them too. And now I feel like these stores are stuck. When when I when I when I opened Bergdorf Goodman and Barney's and 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 these stores, those areas are a little bit smaller. Now you you know you go shop on a Sunday up uptown and it's like. The whole store, there's not, you know, it's, I, I agree with you. And I think, uh, like I said, it's hills and valleys, and I think it's a little saturated right now. But we're making moves, and we're opening a store in New York City Congrats. to have our own uh, to have our own look. And uh, you guys got to check it out tomorrow. Yeah, no, I told you, we're coming. Have, I'm definitely going to be there. Have you ever had conversations with people like Kanye? Because, I mean, he, like, he's been, like, one of the real vocal guys in hip-hop about fashion and wanting to break in and the challenges of being African-American. Have you ever, has he ever spoken to you? Yeah, uh, actually, Kanye was in my office. Uh, oh, I think two years ago, right before he launched the Yeezy line, he was actually in front of uh, my office at a store shopping, and we pulled up to a parking parking space right next to each other. What kind of vehicle? Well, were you I was driving? In, I was I was just in a seven series. He was in a matted black Aventador. Okay, uh, that's a Lamborghini. Which was more things I can't afford or pronounce. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I did I, I did speak with him and and. I have a lot of respect for what he's done in the sneaker game because it's not really easy to do and to have that type of, you know, I was at the I was at the concert last night and just to see the amazing. The, I was there. First of all, the concert was you know, shout out to Kanye West. I mean, am I tripping by saying that's the best concert I've ever been I, to? I, I, I'm not going to say it's the best concert I've ever been to. Mm-hmm. The best concert I've ever been to is KRS One at the Palladium, and. This guy, this big guy, just came out on stage and opened for him. No one knew who he was, and it was Biggie Small. Yeah. Wow, wow. Which I don't know if anyone remembers that concert, but we're like, we're we're in the crowd mm-hmm. anyway. That's a whole. No, other I'm story. with you. Okay, for but me, Kanye West. Okay, for me, it's hard knock life tour, but I get why. Like, but for yeah. the production wise, Kanye yeah. was the best I've ever seen. This last night was was amazing. Mm. Like, it, I mean, it's amazing, and it's funny. It's just him. Right. Just him. Right. A, no guest. That's what makes it really it's great him. that it's just no, music. No hype man. Yep. No Energy hoopla. from the audience was really incredible. And also it's just, I love, I, you know, I know some people on his squad, on his team, and, the, you know, even just getting there and hearing that ominous music, yeah. before he, just everything is just, yeah. I, you know, I'm a huge fan. And the way it lands of, at the end that. and he walks off. And <laughs> but, but I wonder what advice you offered him, because I like what you said about never like it wasn't easy and you had to keep going yeah. and you've been doing it since third grade yeah. I, like. I didn't offer him any advice other than we just kind of chatted about sneakers for for about 15 or 20 minutes um i just think he really pulled off the impossible in the the impossible in the sneaker game and i got much respect for him um and now he's transitioning into his own like a shoe line which mm-hmm. is different than adidas i think he's doing that which will be tough mm-hmm. and i'd love to offer him advice there because that's more on the independent side but but when you have Adidas behind you, and no disrespect at all, I think it makes it a little bit easier. I think the journey I've been on, like on the independent tip and 
to be able to you know, it's a little bit different i kind of pulled off a different situation without like a major behind me so mm-hmm. it's a little bit different the the only advice i'd offer him is to you know to 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 your point um to don't oversaturate the market and i think he's doing an amazing job at that right yeah no he's Did doing you great. Can't you find, you can't even i get calls me, I get calls in my family. Oh, can you get me Yeezys? I'm like, <laughs> I got to go to Stadium Goods and wait online too. I always wonder how y'all make money though. If it's so exclusive, because if you're only making like a limited amount of pairs, like how do you like make profit? I guess. Well, we we sell to about 150 stores around the world. We're in Singapore, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, Japan. We're all throughout Europe. We have we sell to 40 or 50 stores in Italy, Paris, Russia, South America. We're all we're kind of like blanketed the globe, but kind of like picked our, our 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 stores that we want to sell to so we're right. doing pretty good <laughs> we're doing okay we're doing did, you have to go to school? Start you. did you have to go to school for any of this like <laughs> did you ever go to so wow. everything was just from experience yeah I, I think the the i think there's two types of designers there's you know the designers that have been like classically trained technical that are very you know i can build a house or i'm an architect type mm-hmm. of person but then there's the other side like you know you know kanye or me or you know there's other even like you know uh christian louboutin he's not a technical designer he was a he was a buyer you know you know it's more of a knack for it's more of a style thing it's more of like how to put it together you know even the best chefs in the world believe it or not aren't classically trained right so Uh uh-oh yeah our producer producer went to culinary school and he actually hates when people (laughs) he actually hates when people didn't go to school for yeah, Most radio okay. personalities are so classically bad. trained. Well, I get hate, I get hated on too from, yeah. from designers. Like, you're not a designer, and I'll say you, I'm not. I'm not a classically not trained yet. designer. But <laughs> what do you say back to him, Panda? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your relationship with French Montana? Uh, I know Spiff. Not that y'all did a deal. Did y'all do a deal? No, we we were working on something. It didn't. It we we're, we're still trying to figure it out, but we okay. didn't do anything yet. But. But you know, we we I guess we got caught up in the excitement of the yeah, moment. Yeah, I, I thought you announced something. I said, "Oh, they doing a deal." I thought he was yeah. doing his own sneakers. Yeah, we we were we're trying to still figure it out. But um, it's just can you know he's he's busy with his album, and I was busy opening the store. But we're you know we're friends, and we met through uh, um, we met through uh this kid Josh and and uh, Spiff, okay. Spiff TV. <laughs> this everyone's moving to L. A. I'm I surprised you guys aren't like living in L. A. Yet. <laughs> Nah, LA well, too, LA too, LA too fake for me, too plastic out yeah. there. Also, our show would be at 3 a.m. every morning. <laughs> no, when we go to L.A., we Don't you to notice a lot of your friends are moving to Los Angeles? A lot of people moving to L.A. Yeah, are, yeah. crazy. 100%. So it's how re- hands-on are you going to be in the story? Are you going to, like, be, can we come be, and you're going to be there? Like, Tom Absolutely. Tom here. I've been there for the past couple of weeks, and uh, I'll be back and forth from L.A. for the next, I mean, wh- however. Are you opening you know. a store in L.A. too? Eventually we are. We don't have a set date, but we're going to work on L.A. We're looking to possibly open in London and somewhere in Asia as well in the next couple of years. Wow. We're moving. We're moving. Your, your story's very inspiring, though, because I, I got a homeboy who does it. He's young, like dumb young, and he does the same thing. Like He likes to get shoes and you know, redesign them, and he does jeans, and he finds leathers and puts them together, and I never know what to tell him because I don't know anybody in, in, in that field. And like to see you come up from you know Long Island and tell, tell me you didn't go to school and you just had a passion for it. I'm like, wow, okay, thank you. So man. it is possible. It is, and you got the name for it. Yeah, the name. I got blessed with the name. And it, my homeboy got the name too. His All name's right. Christian Alexander. Oh, that yep. sounds like a high end brand. That sounds like <laughs> a high end brand. Yeah. Sounds like you combined. How old is he? He's, he's like 20. Yeah, I would. I would. If uh, you should get him a job. Yeah, at, get a job. Listen. Get work for a big company. Go to work for Ralph Lauren. Go work somewhere in the city. Work for. Theory or something, work somewhere for just encourage him to get a job somewhere. Because yeah, because it's not he like needs you just the rest. Do, mm-hmm. Like you can be a dope designer, but there's this whole other piece. Like that's like this much of the pie. You know? And even well, working sure on what? Give, give me your card. Absolutely, so I absolutely. <laughs> I'll, uh, I have no problem. I'll give him 15 minutes of my time. Oh, and, and even nice working part. on Wall Street, I'm sure they give you a lot of business sense as far as investing and learning how to. Of course, move. that was a big piece of it too. To know the, you know the, you know. Industry rule number four thousand and eighty. You know, industry people are shady. Industry yeah. people like, are that's, shady. That's what you learn. That's how you learn. Mm-hmm. You have to. You you need the business acumen, as well as the design aspect, or you're just you're you're dead in the water. You know. 
All right. Well, mm-hmm. I appreciate you joining us. We're definitely going to come um, by to your you, grand man. opening. Thank you very much. I even called you yesterday, who's DJing? She was like stretching my beat. I was like, ah, ah, ah. I said, yeah, Stretch Armstrong. Because he said, who's DJing? He said, I was Not like, Bob, but Stretch. Yeah, oh, stretch. stretch. Just Stretch Armstrong, yeah. but yeah. But if you're down to jump on, Stretch, I'm sure we'll give you the... Absolutely. Oh, no, he won't. You, you ain't taking his time. <laughs> Don't give him a discount on nothing, though. Don't give him a discount on nothing. He was going to buy that bag full <laughs> price, man. No. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is I was asked, I went to the store to buy a bag because I just bought a car and the car is red. So I was like, right. I'm going to buy this red matching bag. I thought That's it was so All this rich <laughs> talk. And then Yee called me and told me, I said, Yee. The I next said, day. I said, can we get a discount, Yee? He was like, I see what I could do. I see what I'll I can ask. do. I'll she ask. Said she was I'm going to ask my boy Joseph I because, you know, he's a hookup. So Yee said she was going to buy One time for Joseph for my birthday. I. So thank you, Yee, for buying a bag and purchasing me the bag for my birthday. Believe that if you want. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm going to get him what he got me on my birthday. what I get you? Nothing. Uh-oh. Well, it's John Bushimi. <laughs> it's The Thank Breakfast Club. Much. Good morning. Hey, 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 hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.